Hi there, Oleg is here with another episode of TypeScript Fundamentals and today we will talk about modules and how we can load them with Webpack. Let's dive right in. Once again we are back in our Rainbow application. For those who are here for the first time you can find the source code of this app at github.com slash oleconic slash rainbow. So all our application is doing is changing the color of this half dome, which we consider to be a rainbow, with this piece of code that lives in app.ts and gets transpiled with TypeScript compiler to app.js, which is ES5 JavaScript. Obviously our application right now exists only in this single file app.ts and started growing step by step so it might be the right time to do some refactoring. Let's say we want to create the new file which is gonna be our utils file which is very common in pretty much any application that has more than 50 lines of code. So we'll create utils.ts and we'll try to figure out what we can move out of our app.ts file in order to make it more concise and those methods more reusable in our application overall. So obviously the major action happens right here in this main function. So what we're gonna do, we'll try to move all this logic and all those interfaces and types into separate file utils.ts that we have just created. Probably most of you guys have already seen imports and exports keywords that ES6 or ES2015 gives us. So let's do some magic here. So we want to export our type. We'll do the same for interface for our function generate color in case we have to use it somewhere else in our application. And we will export this function and okay we are getting some problems here. So what it's saying to us that overload signatures must all be exported or not exported. In our case we want to export them so we will put export keywords in front of all overloads. Uh, if you don't have a clue what overloads are please see my previous video about function overloads. Now in our main app.ts file we'll go ahead and import stuff that we need and all we need here is mutate element function, but let's do it this fancy way. So we will state that we want to import something. We'll import this object and behind this import stays the so-called object destructuring. And we will see that just in a second. So we'll import from dot slash utils. So you can see we have relative path here with name of the file. We don't have to specify dot js just like in most of the cases when we use requires in Node.js. But now if we do it this way, we have auto completion. So we want to import mutate element or let's say we need a valid style name for our type alias. We get those hints. But in our case, all we need is mutate element itself, our function that has major functionality baked in. So at this point we feel really cool, we have our auto-completion, we can jump to the definition of our function, we can even see that the proper line was picked up for us since this particular overload was used. So we will just save our files, compiler went through fine without any errors, so we will go to our page and we will just refresh it. So our browser tells us that we are missing something. We cannot find variable exports. For those who have worked with Node.js, you will figure out that exports is something that is coming from Node.js. So let's try to figure out why this is happening. We'll go into our distribution folder and we will see what is going on here. At the very top, our TypeScript compiler is doing its own thing. It's trying to figure out how to export and import files. So it tries to define property for exports. And then exports are used to attach the methods that we defined. On the other hand, 
the place we are where we are trying to import the module, we see the good old require statement that exists in Node.js environment, which obviously cannot be executed in the browser. So let's try to figure out why this is happening. So we will go to JSConfig, and as we remember, by default, our module loader is set to common JS. We have few other options, which is none, which means we cannot use import and export at all. Common JS, which we have right now, AMD is the older version of module loading for Node.js, we will not stop here. System is the global variable that will be available in the browser, but it's not possible to use it right now without polyfills. UMD is the wrapper around CommonJS and AMD. Or we can just have ES2015, which will just keep the ES6 imports and export statements. At this point, we will introduce the webpack, which will be our module loader that will give us a way to still use CommonJS require statements in the code that we use in the browser. So in order to start with Webpack, we have to turn our application into Node application. So what we're gonna do, we will stop our compiler. And as we remember, we have Yarn as our package manager. So we can use it for initiation a Node.js application. So we will do Yarn in it and we will pass dash y parameter in order to answer yes to all the questions for initialization of our project just to make it easier now we have our package json that we will take care of and yarn lock is just the file to track dependencies and we don't have to manage it manually at least at this point this is going to be it for the first part of modules and loading modules with webpack please see the second part of this episode soon